Hi guys, welcome to our stream this afternoon. Um, I hope you enjoyed the War Dragon stream last night and doing a little bit of a preview on Obsidian. Um, if you have Obsidian questions, I haven't flown any of them myself, but I'm happy to tell you what I've seen, what I've heard, and what the consensus is from high-level players who are actually flying them. So holla at me, but if you weren't already aware, my general view on Obsidian is this. Less than 60% of Obsidian tier is out, and I therefore think making a decision um, can be a bit rash if you are not already to the point where you are getting Obsidian Dragons. So, personal opinion may not be the best opinion, but my personal opinion. So, me, my uh, main account is only an Emerald. I don't even have, you know, enough Emeralds to get my Mythic for yet, so Obsidian is definitely off in my future, so... Anyway, that was last night. I hope it was fun. How you doing, guys? Hi, Zeus. Are Zeus, are you going to be famous again today? And come hang out with me on all my flights? Hey, Ariston. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. We're going to have some fun today, I suppose. So, first things first, let's talk about the event, because it will start... Um, just a couple of hours after we end our stream today. So if you're not already familiar with Tug of War or Capture the Flag, um, whatever it's being called, let's take a quick little gander. I'll give you some tips and tricks from my personal opinion. I'm not going to give you everything. Um, just unfortunately, I do try to keep a lot of the really fine details for my team. So that way I can help them to the best of my ability. But I will definitely give pretty generic and general advice also, if you're not in our tier, um, in Sapphire tier, um, or Sapphire League, sorry, then your strategies might completely vary from ours anyway. <clears throat> so, sorry about my voice today. I'm really trying to get this cold so it doesn't work. And if anyone says, if you're getting cold while you're drinking beer, you can suck it. Because beer feels better than water right now. So this is again on a bus. Typical of Zeus. I always catch Zeus when he's on the bus. That's his war dragon time. All right, so let's take a quick overview here of the event. So Tug of War is pretty simple. Um, before we touch on Mega Coins and all that, whatnot, that's new this event, let's talk about the very basics. So on the very far left side of your screen, you'll see your own team name. Mine is obviously Rulith. And on the right, you'll see the other 24 teams in your league, and you can scroll through. To a normal member, this is exactly what your screen will look like. So everything's pretty much the same color. There's really no changes. Um, and leaders and officers do have a completely different screen. So bear with me. A lot of you already know these basics, but I do want to touch on these in case you don't. So the little white flag in the center means no one quite has it. As the flag turns green and goes further to the left, that means that your team is capturing the flag. And it goes to the red side, that means the other team is. You have to beat the other team by more than a thousand points. So that's the basics of this. That being said, super attacks, now mega attacks have kind of changed the strategy a little bit. So let's see if we can go in. If it'll give us... There we go. So if we click on Ancient Heart here, who is in our league, this is where we would attack them. And, you know, once the event starts, we can use energy and we'll be able to switch on super attacks and all that whatnot. But let's take a look at this section, which is flags. So this is a really key thing that a lot of people don't realize. So everyone is rank one right now in our league. Um, they have 100 flags and it tells you how much their flags are worth. So it says it currently just has 100 of its own flags. Ancient Heart does purely because we haven't started the event yet. So, victory points are all determined at the very end of the event. There is no scaling victory points in Tug of War, which makes it my least favorite event. So even if you capture a flag mid-event, your team actually is holding on to nothing, because as soon as those flags go away, your team loses those uh, victory points again. So a flag belonging to Team X is worth one victory point for every flag the team earns. So you can see that one Ancient Heart flag is currently worth 100 victory points, because they currently have 100 flags. So at the end of the event, let's say Ancient Heart, this is not true, let's say Ancient Heart does terribly in this event, and they end up having two flags. For every flag that they own, that's how many victory points their flag is worth. So their victory, their flag is only worth 
two victory points in that scenario. So this means when you're starting to target for events leaders and officers and members, when you're attacking for an event, you really want to hit people that have more flags. The teams that do better, their flags are worth more. So if you see these little teams that, you know, they're just getting absolutely crushed and they're probably going to end 25th in the league, it's kind of a waste of your time and resources to hit them. So if you're a member that's hitting a low level team because it's good points and it's easier points for you, that's definitely harmful to what your team rank could be. So it's up to your team on how much you value team rank. Um, personally, Rulith, we really like to push ourselves as hard as we can in a reasonable amount. Um, but if your team doesn't care about team rewards and it's all about personal rewards for you, then hey, get the personal rewards for you. So your own flags are worth an additional 2.5 times victory points when under your control. Long live Ruleth. What, what? So if you have your own flags, they're worth more. And victory points are updated after the event or after the round ends. And again, these rounds last for six hours. So we're going to do a switch screen here. I'm going to give you to my main. My main is the leader Ruleth right now. Sometimes I flip things around depending on where I am in my schedule to make sure that my best device or my most successful device is the leader of Ruleth. So let's switch to my iPhone. Let's take a look at the event from a leader perspective or from an officer perspective. So, <laughs> so I'm going to claim my free chest. If you don't log in every so often to claim your free chest, please make sure you do. Everyone likes free things. That's typically where I get most of my silver chests from. <laughs> All right. All right, so now you're seeing things from a leader or uh, officer perspective. It's the same exact setup depending, you know, who you are on your team. So the only addition here other than the display is completely different because now we're on my phone. Hey, thanks for the follow, darling. Nice to have you here, Sparta. Um... So the leader account here, you can see, has those little target icons. This is right next to the attack icon. So if you are the leader of your team, you can see here, if I tap this, it'll turn that team red. For my teammates, that means that is the team that I want you to attack. That could be for any number of reasons. They have our flag. They're worth more points. I just don't like you today. Whatever your reason for targeting is. That team will stay targeted until another officer or the leader untargets it. Also... All of the targeted teams after reload for all of your members will appear at the top. I definitely recommend targeting about five teams at a time. I ensure that there's always someone that people of all levels on my team can hit. So Ruleth has a level range of, let me see if I can remember, 92 to 360, no, 339. I think is our big player right now. So I try to make sure that there is a team that really has a ton of flags that's best for us as a team to hit, but I also make sure there's a team that maybe their flags aren't worth as much, but it's a still useful flag that my lower level teammates can hit. So I ensure that I'm trying to look out for my whole team um, and we communicate about this in my officer chat all the time. So Arison, this is my least favorite event. I absolutely detest this event. Um, for three main reasons. I think I ranted about this two days ago. One, there is no like stain of victory points. So it doesn't matter how good your team does at the beginning and middle. It only matters how good your team does at the end, which makes me mad. So that. Two, the energy resets are ever, or the rounds are every six hours. So this really screws over um, teams that have a heaviness in one times or another. Thankfully, Ruleth is really heavy in all time zones except for a generic Asian time zone, um, meaning that my time about 2 to 4 a.m. is our weakest point. So rounds ending in our weakest point are more difficult for my team. And if that happens to be your team, if the event or the last couple of rounds end when you're asleep, your team is screwed just because of your time zone which I really don't like. And one, the most recent reason why I detest this event is no longer do we have a bonus meter, and now we have these mega coins. So, hey, Copperhead. The reason why I believe these mega coins and lack of bonus meter and things like this are detrimental to uh, gameplay outside of the whale experience is because of how capturing flags works. If you're opponent is only ahead of you by about 1,000 points, which is what you need to capture the flag, just over a thousand on your side, more than them. 
then you can just do like two super attacks and you got your flag back. It's pretty quick. So it really comes down to the end of a round for that. Now with these mega coins, it doesn't matter if I have like five teammates doing super attacks over and over using all of our, you know, working hard, building up, saving our energy. This one mega coin is really going to ensure that this one whale can beat my team. So I'm really mad about that. Um, if you weren't already aware, you do get one free mega coin every single person in the game. Also, if you do have a great valor, you will get a mega coin. So you can have up to eh, typically one great valor at a time. Great valors only drop from will drop to from gold chests. And once you have a great valor, great valors no longer drop. So the only way you could have more than one great valor in your inventory right now is if you open a set of 10 gold chests and there was more than one great valor drop there. So that's my bet. I'm with you, Arison. Mega coins use 20 inner fire and 100 energy, so I'm gonna pass. Uh, me too. Do you see how many inner fires I have? Does it look like I have the inner fires to waste on this? So, unfortunately, I just really think that my team isn't gonna do as well as we typically do because we pride ourselves in activity and contributions and overall organization. And no amount of organization can make up for a couple hundred dollars that someone's dropping to get these mega coins. So I'm pretty bummed about that. I'm really disappointed um, in PG for catering so heavily to whales and doing this to team ranks. So I understand that whales want to spend, well, some whales want to spend less time on the game and they have a disposable income. You know what? More power to them. But... This is just a huge slap in the face to all amount of activity and organization and whatnot the teams have had up until this point. So I'm really upset and how blatantly, you know, like Arison, Arison said, how blatantly PG has made this pay to win for this event. And I'm, I'm really upset by that. So sad enough on the event. What I'm going to do now is I realize that I don't have my line notifications off on my iPad. So before we switch to that, I'm going to turn off my line. Harrison said, I don't see the fun in it. It'll just be frustrating working hard and then amounting to nothing. I agree, especially because this is just like freaking Mario Party where somebody could come in and just steal all of the things that you've worked hard for because these victory points don't last. I might feel a little bit differently if we got to keep half the victory points of the flags we earned at the time. That'd be a different story, but it's not. And right now it's all about the end and it's all about who can pay the most. And there's no way it's physically impossible for a free player to really out out activity a whale in this case ian says i agree 100 percent red just money grabbing nonsense it is it's absolute nonsense it is to the point where i'm really close to telling my team just get your own personal points and screw a team rank because there's nothing we can really do but i'm gonna try our best like we always do and see where the chips fall or the mega coins fall in this case houston says they're ruining the game they are um there has to be a delicate balance between pocket gems making a profit and keeping players happy. I completely get that. No one really gets that more than me. If you notice any of my things that I say in the uh, forums, a lot of times I will come to PG's defense. I do believe they have to make a profit, but at what cost is what I really have to really have to ask here. So these mega coins, maybe they'll make a bigger profit on this, but they're really hurting a lot of people. Hey, Robert, thank you so much for the follow. We're excited about this. Arison says I'm focusing on personal points. Yep, so I'm really going to see where my team's at in the next couple hours here. We do have a strategy because we all will get that free mega coin. So at least we'll have that, I guess. And if you had a great value, you get a mega coin for that. Um, slight pause. If you are looking at opening chests for this, do not open chests yet. There have been reports that um, Valors are still dropping from chests, which is a bad thing because it's not just Great Valors, which will be replaced by Mega Coins, but it's the other Valors too, the 25% Valors, and those are completely useless and you're not being compensated for those at all. So please hold off on opening gold chests if you have them and really wait until we have confirmation that it's started. I'm a fan of letting other people pave the way of mistakes and test things before I drop my very you know hard earned and rarely seen rubies so that's personally just me so to prove my point you can kind of take a look at where I'm sitting for rubies right now it's not too pleased with it um, I try to only spend rubies on um, breeding events and that's really what I do there and then doing my missions so anyway 
Thanks about the gold chest info. Was thinking about it. You're welcome, Ian. Um, definitely wait. Um, I check the forums daily, and I try to keep on track of on top of that. So ask around in your league chat. Say, has anyone opened gold chests yet? Are you still seeing valors? If anyone sees a valor in a gold chest drop, that means that. They haven't fixed the chest yet, but PG is aware of the issue, and Jared said that he will be doing something about it, so. Yep. That's my favorite emoji, and Thorgasm on Lay League Chat has it right now. It's just a, okay, it is what it is, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, we've touched base on the event. Do you guys have any other event questions? I'm not sure of you people online here who have done this event before, who haven't, who have completely forgotten about this event, who choose to forget about this event. I'm in that category there. Um, but if you have any questions on the event, if I have an answer for you, I'm totally happy to take care of that. In the meantime, let's do... Hmm. I was thinking about talking about Season Dragon stuff. Because we have a month left, just about a month left, let's see, in this season. I'm personally not as far as I would have liked to be, but uh, we'll get there. All right. So if we take a look at the season tab here. Um, so September 5th. So we have just over a month left of the season. A month and two days, people. A month and two days. We're getting down to the wire here. So personally, I'm really disappointed with my progress so far. You can see down here on the Borg line, I have claimed just past Garnet. Um, so I am working on getting enough sigils here to get my next event. Um, so I am just five claims away from having the Emerald Stone. Which is great, but I have never done an event where I haven't maxed two dragons each, um, at least on my accounts. That includes my alt account, so I'm pretty disappointed um, with myself and how far I've gotten. I know that it's not my fault. It really has to do with the increased cost these seasons and the difficulty with um, sigils dropping because of league restructure and the fact that PG has not yet addressed team rewards in the league restructure, so... Your how works better than any of those. So Tony um, loves Santa Monica. <laughs> I was I tagged him like 15 times yesterday because I was trying to test something with AA, which maybe I'll show you guys in just a sec. Hey, Texas. Um, but to close out my season thing, so a month and two days, guys, until season ends. So I have, I'm getting close to finishing Borg there, but I was hoping to finish Kin on this account as well. But as you can see, I have just claimed the dragon herself, so we'll see where we are. I'll definitely continue on this line to get some prizes, but I'm pretty bummed um, that I haven't finished a dragon yet, and this is how far we are in the season. So, Tony, I'm going to come attack you. Let's see if I can show you guys what I was doing with Tony yesterday. So I can't clear Tony's base with the um, setup I'm about to use, but I was doing it to test Aquiles and Osteros. So I am an Emerald tier. That means that my Al Gore, my um, Aster, my Fae, and obviously Desi are all in Emerald tier, and Borg will be there soon. So I was like, well, let's see if we can do some more things and test strategy and skill flying over dragons. I want to see how things are going. So I really wanted to look at Aquiles and Osteros' Southern Cross. So I've talked about his spells before. If you're not aware of Aquiles and Osteros, I love this dragon. This is a Sapphire Mythic. This is a Sorcerer, obviously. So the four spells here are extremely unique to Aquiles and Osteros and how he uses them. So Celestial Dance is the symbol that looks like the yin and yang there. That's what allows us to switch between light and dark versions of spells. Both Northern Lights and Southern Cross have a light and a dark version. The light version gives us health, the dark version gives us rage. So when we're looking at these, Celestial Dance allows us to go back and forth. Southern Cross is a spell that I've really been working on using. Southern Cross does an AoE attack that does a lot of damage, and I really wanted to see if that damage could amount to taking down level 50 towers and hopefully level 50 plus, because I'm not quite sure. So I wanted to test how useful Aquiles and Osteros was as a cleanup dragon. So this is what we tested. So Tony says, see my base destruction live. She taps really fast. So we'll see. Arison says, I'm only level 74. I'll continue playing until I get A and A. Great thing. There's a lot of great dragons along the path to A and A. Um, Arison, I'll show you a few of those in a second. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take just a wee bit of a break. Um, I hear my dogs <laughs> and they need to go outside. So since I do have a 14 week old puppy, I don't want to risk any house accidents. So sorry, guys. I'll be right back.
super sorry about that, but <laughs> my carpet is saved. So, getting back to this. So, a and quick recap. Southern Cross, Northern Lights, Dark and Light Version. Celestial Dance switches. Cosmic Energy I don't use very much. Uh, cosmic Energy basically um, takes away debuffs if Equilis and Elsters has high health. Um, but since... Belize doesn't really highly use. This is pretty useless. I would honestly, if we had a resist there, oh, we'd have a lot of fun. So I'll show you real quick on Tony what I was trying to do and how I was testing my attack. So again, I like to do a little shout out for Tony. He's got a little, um, not so little, platinum team named Arya. They're super, super sweet. Hey, fantastic. Nice to see ya. Um, and so my strategy here was trying to see how much damage ANA could do if all the mages are down. Unfortunately, for some reason, leading with how on my alt, I'm significantly better than leading with how on my mini. Oh, my green screen's doing some weird things again today. Must have bumped it getting the doggos. There we go, sorry. Um, <laughs> so I'm not as good with ANA on my main for some reason, but I'm really working on it. So I apologize in advance, but Let's give this a go. Hey, thanks for the follow, darling. Nice to have you. So I'm going to try with, how is it here? I'm going to use Summon Warrior to save me from the seven, second level 50 flak. And my goal is to see if I can get down all of the mage towers on that first small and the long, just so I can show you what I was talking about with a and um, Better how flyers out there, you might have a better shot than me. But right now, unfortunately, I don't know. I've only flew against Tony like 15 times yesterday. So I'm going to be really embarrassed if I did weird things. I'll show you in a second, Arison. I'll show you where my baby how is right now. All right, guys. Wish me luck. Tony, here I come. Oop. I have screen recording on. I have to turn that off. Just want that blue down. Oh, Tony, you have a stinking teammate defending. Make him go away. <laughs> All right. Well, the mages are down. I blame your teammate, Tony. They don't like when I attack Tony, and I feel bad, but meh. Nah. Oh, fish bone. We're going to have a bone to pick. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. So A and A. I do freeze just because sometimes my aim is a little off. So we're switching to oops. Oh shit, shit, shit. Meant to switch to the dark version of the spell. I done fucked up, guys. I done fucked up. Push shield instead of switch. Okay, Tony, seriously, we're gonna have to have a conversation about your teammate. <laughs> I done fucked up. But here's the point with Southern Cross. Oh, you, his little fuck took down that storm too. Oh, I'm going to kill this guy. Tony, I have to hit you again. Because <laughs> how can I prove my ANA cleanup skills if you have a little shit defender? I'm going to attack you again, Tony. I'm going to turn off my shareable replay clap first. Ah! This isn't meant to show how I can so solo Tony's base. This is meant to show how a a can clean up level 50 towers. Damn it, Tony. <laughs> I Like I said, there's no way. I can't solo Tony's base. I just can't. But I'm trying to show you guys how a a can actually clean up level 50 towers. I didn't lead very well. That's definitely my fault. I should have sanded the storm as well. If the storm had it gone off, there wouldn't have been a problem. If I would have used the right spell in the first place, it wouldn't have been a problem. So... Christy, you know, red just done fucked up there. Christ. Okay. <sighs> I'm going to give Tony a few seconds. Maybe a little shit won't defend again. But you know what? Good on him being a good teammate there. I'm not going to waste my summon if there's a defender, though. Let's see. Let's see. Hi, Tony! Does this mean you're not gonna, you're gonna make sure I don't get hit by super shots? That's so nice of you. Oh, you little fuck! Ugh! Your officer's being a dick!
I'm not going to waste my time with that. Well, I guess we can't use Tony's base because Tony's team clearly does not want his base to be used as an example. I can't even get 70% on it doing this, but I know Sex Testicles, right? There's some, there's some great names on Aria right now. My alt is there too. They know me. That's not like they don't know who I am. <laughs> they know me. Oh yeah, wait, like, ugh, just. <laughs> well, he is a little fuck. Get, ugh, ugh. Tony, you gotta talk to your team. Tell them I'm not trying to solo you or take you down or anything. I'm trying to prove a point. How can I prove this point? <laughs> ah! <sighs> Tony, we gotta get this, we gotta get this shit handled, man. Tell them just not to defend. I'm not gonna solo you. <laughs> Jeez. How are they confused? Just say, don't defend against red for like five minutes. It doesn't take that much. Jeez. Oh. What? <sighs> How long have I been on Arya? <laughs> like, how long have I been an account there? They didn't... What? They had no idea. So my Lady Red account is on Arya. They have no idea that my Lady Red is the same as me. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so can you tell them I'm not trying to farm you? I'm just trying to prove a freaking point. <sighs> I'm hitting Tony again until there's no defenders. Damn it. I'm going to show you why a and can do really well on a base if you can actually lead well, which I can't lead well. Ah! Okay. We don't have any summon warriors left, so thanks, Sex Testicles. Thanks for joining me. Oh, and I fucking invited. <sighs> Testicles, I swear to God, if you defend, I'm going to come hit you. You little shit. Tony, I'm about to come farm your team. They're pissing me off. We gotta have, like, an actual conversation. Because clearly, Sucks Testicles has no idea what the fuck is going on with her life right now. Anyway, at least I can show you once what I mean about using Southern Cross. And then I'm gonna go hit Sucks Testicles just for the shits and giggles. So you can see there, a single Southern Cross, I have all my rage back. And if somebody would be defending, then I could show you more and how you can use this over and over and over again because all of these towers that you're damaging, you're getting rage back. So, Tony, let's let's have a conversation with Sex Testicles because I'm going to come hit her ass in a second. Jesus. How hard is it? Like, how hard is it to follow directions? If your leader's like, hey, don't defend me, because Red's trying to show people something. No. You know what? Let's let's defend. Let's just, let's make this hard on Red, and let's just make it so she can't show people what she's trying to show people. The other day, Poppy and I tried this. Uh, so I tested this on Tony yesterday about 15 times. Um... <laughs> And I got a couple of defenders. I don't think they realize what's going on either. Or apparently they have no idea who I am. The fact that I'm not. Like they didn't make the collection that I'm also their teammate. I don't know. So I was hitting Tony. And I was testing a and And once I kind of tested it a few times. I flew behind Poppy. Who is one of our bigger players. And I think his neck to is uh, 20. Or something like that. And we had a big base on the Titans. And a and cleaned it up really, really well. So... Get rid of the mages and a and does damage because you can't hammer spam a and because all the Southern Cross damage happens at once. So, yeah, it just doesn't work on Tony's base when Tony's team decides they're going to defend, even though we've talked about this, apparently. So, we need to have some words, Tony, with the, your team if they don't realize who I am. So, hmm. just a little bit there. Anyway... That's my point on ANA. A. Um, I'll show you real quick on Ala, but it's not as cool when it happens on Ala because Ala's base is, you know, obviously meant to be taken down quick. But I can show you at least how it goes through. So Ala doesn't have any big towers though, which is kind of the bummer thing. But yeah. 
Havoc said, had any of the deems mentioned that they were watching your stream at any point? Yes, actually. Uh, so Jared, the head of customer support, pops on every once in a while. Uh, Campus Lifer, who is the head of engineering security, has popped on. Um, Pixel, who's on the marketing team and does some of their streams and their social media, has popped on. Uh, but no one else that I know of from that point on. So maybe they do, maybe they don't. Right now in PG land, it is what, 10 o'clock? Yeah, about 10.30 a.m. at PG World, so sometimes they shop, stop on closer to lunch, and so Jared will pop in. But, I don't know. Don't really know what they think. I think they think I'm entertaining a little bit. Yeah, 10.35 PG time. So, maybe they've stopped in. So, I'm going to show you the chain effect with ANA. So, this works especially, obviously, if you're not flying against Tony's base with annoying defenders. The officer logged off after you leadered her. Did you tell her I wasn't even going to beat you? <laughs> Jeez. Hey, coach. Uh, so you can see a and A's when Southern Cross doesn't bug, um, a and A's just kind of constant cycle. If you use Southern Cross Dark here, you can just use it over and over because as long as you're killing a several towers, I'd say three to four, um, you're getting all of your rage back or enough rage back to cast Southern Cross again. And so if you have a lead that does take down all of the mage towers and then the storms that they are also able, you can just use a and A and just come after them in a stream of spamming Southern Cross. And again, this cannot be hammer farmed or hammer spammed because um, there is nothing left to hammer. So this takes out the towers immediately. And the reason why I was doing this on Tony's base is I wanted to show that this also takes down level 50 towers with no problem. So I'll be very curious how they do Southern Cross versus these new towers that'll be coming out, I'm sure, next fortification. Um, they haven't been announced, but... I'm sure we all realize that new tier means, um, or new tier of dragons means more towers coming up. So I would definitely be saying we're going to see about level 53 towers. And then when they release the rest of Obsidian, I'd say 55 is my guess. So until we see the warrior and the hunter mythic, we're not really going to see much. So that's a and A. I think he makes a wonderful cleanup dragon. Um, hopefully you're not hitting people like defend or, or like Tony who are defending and things like that. Um, bigger levels. But if you are hitting people a little bit lower or if you have a better lead than I, like than myself, I think a and A makes a great cleanup dragon. So Tony was trying to read and talk at the same time. Tony said they didn't defend red, ancient scent and defending red. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, maybe it's because I hit you 15 times yesterday and they think I'm farming you. But if they think I'm farming you, wouldn't they just stop sending you all of their resources when you're not online? Sorry, was that not a very well veiled comment on how your team just shouldn't just send you resources? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, anyway, so that is a little bit on A&A. &A. Um, the reason I was testing that is I am a terrible cleanup flyer <laughs> in wars like I'm absolutely terrible um leading is definitely one of my stronger suits I am a much better leader than I am a cleanup but that even that being said I, I don't lead as well as I wish I could especially on these max level bases just I don't have the firepower and with defenders I just get ripped apart so even on Tony's base um you know a defender it doesn't matter what level you are a defender is the same level across the board um so Defenders suck, man. Defenders suck. So I've done a couple of my multis today. I did Borg, but I haven't done Faye yet just because Faye is really neglected. Um, but we are going to switch back to my alt and we're going to talk about Baby How. So with the event coming up, I've needed and I was a little pressured to level up my Baby How. So I'm very excited for you guys to see um, what the team has done last night in regards to feeding. So I'm going to switch devices here real quick on your screen because it's fun. Today's beer is slightly green screened and bought to you by Lenny Krugel Summer Shandy. And it has a lot of green on its label. So unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see too much of it, but it is what it is. Yep. All right. Let's see here. Come on. You can load. I believe in you. There we go. Okie dokie. So um, let's take a look at my how, who is now level nine. So love my how. I have definitely taken a look at this already um, and fed him a bit just so I could get him up a bit. But we do have to do some multis on how and let's see if we can get him to 10 today. Havoc said, so what's my favorite dragon? Oh, um, Dimma. <laughs> 
absolutely Dimma. So Dimma is a Defying Dragon that I don't have on either of these two accounts, but I can switch to another account here. And I'll do that at the end of my stream, actually, and show you some old school Divines. Um, but excluding Divines and all shape, ways, shapes, and forms, it's How's It. Um, How's It takes a lot of skill, is very difficult to fly, very temperamental a lot of times. But, man, how he... He kicks some butt. So I really like How's It. Um, and again, like I said, I'm going to show you some old school divines, some really pretty art divines um, near the end of the string. So let us do some flying. See if we need any more food to collect. It's a bit there. And wood. If you guys want wood, my accounts always have wood. All right, so again, 40.4K is my max XP, which is what we're looking for here. And if possible, I'm looking for a single blue mage on the Long Island just to make my life a little bit easier. And the double blue is an effective how, just, you know, how away. All right, let's take a look at this base here. Uh, I'm sure most of you can point out the flaws that are going on. I count. One, two, three, four, about five flaws. Let's see. Five flaws. Hit me up, guys. Arison said the design competition dragon is only going up to sapphire tier. I honestly haven't been paying attention, Arison. Um, if that's what they announced, that's what they announced. But as soon as I saw the spells that were even for voting, um, I knew that it wouldn't be useful at my level anyway. Either of my accounts, so it doesn't really matter to me. So sorry that I'm not well informed, but I just stopped caring as soon as I saw the crap spells. So, but if that was a statement rather than a question, yes? <laughs> Come on guys, what are the flaws of this base? You can do it, I know you can do it. This is a level 263, 55 million defense. Anyone? Want to point out why I'm picking this base? Doesn't have any food. Has wood, which obviously I'm not going to take. But I want it for XP. No one? <laughs> Havoc says, oh, no, don't play this. Havoc, you might want to consider it. War Dragons is fun, addicting, and a bit too much. So... Let's talk about this real quick. So this is a higher level base than my main account. So my main account is 251 and it has a defense um, showing on my profile of 133 million, but we'll take a look at my base difference in a second. Texas says, obviously it's weak. Yes. Um, the defense power is extremely low. Uh, Ned Tessic says one blue mage on the Long Island. Mm -hmm. That definitely leaves it open to some how flying. Let's take a look at how many lightning towers there are here. I count six lightning towers. That's a little excessive. The base is too long. Um, the storm placements, um, I see a storm in the middle of a small island protecting low level towers at a weird, you know, kind of protecting the flak a little bit, but it's a low level storm. And then at the end, Really poor flak placement there. Um, the mage towers are really sporadic and not well placed. So there is no mage tower protecting the uh, two small islands there. And just a mage at the very end of the long island, which doesn't really make any sense. Um, it's just, it's also evenly built. So if they're at 268, um, I understand sometimes being capped by your builder's hut and you can't build a higher level tower. But... Even then, I shouldn't be seeing 26, 33s, 38s, 40s, 44s. It's it's really poorly built. Um, I'm sorry, Matland, but you have a bad base, honey. So let's hit this with how. Like I said before, I do back myself up with my main. So this is my 138 account you can see on the screen. And then my main is a 251 that we'll be following. Unless, of course, somebody beats me to the punch, which happens every once in a while. There's a player on my team, Jade. She has three accounts on the team. It's impossible to join one of her runs. So every time I do, I get really excited. So I'm going to sand things to slow me down as much as I can. Um, and the reason for that is to build up Rage. So Rage is our friend. So these sanded towers allow me to go really slow. 
and build up some rage to attack. Fire turrets are not dangerous unless they've already fired, in which case I would do a blink. So what is this, a level 9 how right now and a level 268 base? Thanks for the follow, darling. All right, I missed that ice turret just by a bit. I'm going to blink through this one. And I'm going to rewind in just a hot second. Because I know those were the 44s in back there, the turrets. I'm going to cat for builders hot 41 turrets and flax. It sucks, doesn't it? Does that mean you're waiting for sapphire or garnet um, eggs to continue building Texas? Rewind. My, uh, my main was stopped for a long time missing garnet eggs. So that's one of the downfalls to having the A and A path, which is what I choose to follow on my accounts. Strong dragons, but it also means that getting egg fragments can be a little slow. So there's no mages on this next island, I know. So I'm going to do a little bit of blinking through here. Again, the blink is I'm not using the rewind version of the spell because I do not have any of it left. If you take a look at Howe's head, if he doesn't have any little bits on the side of his head, that means he cannot do rewind anymore. He's lost all of his time-shifting abilities. So... Ah. So I think we did all right, considering I'm a level 138 and I just hit a level 268. And that really shows you why your base setup is important. So coming up here to finish up, I am going to pull, let's see what dragon, doesn't really matter. Let's do Borg. He's out of Maltese. Give him a little bit of XP. So Borg is this season's dragon, one of the dragons I've chosen to get. So on him, I do have three legendary healing marks. A quick shout out to remind you that as long as the secondary ability is different, you can have multiple of the same rune or glyph on a dragon. Again, as long as the secondary is different. So I have three there. I'm going to put an epic uh, healing mark on him in replacement of that purple rare that you can see flying behind him. That rare is a wisdom rune that I just want to keep on him so I can level him up a little bit easier. There goes Borg. He is a nice looking dragon, isn't he? Especially with all those little dudes following him. I enjoy it. Tony says, what do you think of the new runic chess? So I'm glad that Jared has taken um, some of the criticism to heart. And one of the main issues with runic chess is there was no guaranteed drop through the buying 10. So buying 10 didn't guarantee you a mythic or legendary. Now it does. So every 10 runic chests you open, you are guaranteed a mythic or legendary drop. Jared has also hinted at on the forums that they've added new runes to runic chess only. So new runes that I can think of might include Earthquake and Thunderbolt like we have on Borgian. Um, and a couple other of these newer spells. So I'm crossing my fingers that these runic chests this season will give us more. Keep an update on the forums. Jared has promised that he will post um, a poll of about 10 screenshots of pulling 10 chests each. So 100 uh, chests, runic chests to see what's actually going on inside. I can tell you that they have removed Ballista, all types of Ballista runes from runic chests entirely. They do not exist. Um, the suggestion was made to also remove things like Evasion, because we all know how many evasion runes Red has. Evasion runes and storm runes and different really useless runes like that. Um, but he said they didn't manage to do that this time around. So they are a little bit cheaper, cheaper by 2k per 10. Um, personally, as you can tell by my rubies on both accounts, I cannot afford to open any of them. So uh, I'm kind of disappointed that way. So they're really expensive like Hopper says. So... I don't know. Give and take. I'm not going to get any. I'm looking forward to seeing what Jared posts. Um, if they have ammo runes in there, though, I can tell you right now, if ammo runes drop like a, like, well, I would be really tempted to say might 
be worth getting it. Ammo runes are some of the best runes in the game. I wish I could give you an example. I'm going to pull up Amoeba here really quick and pull up. So again, I'm going to plug Amoeba real quick. AmoebaStudios.com forward slash dragon. Amoeba has so much game info and he has put it into a really easy format to read. I love Amoeba. He is such a sweetheart. If you have not donated to Amoeba before, please consider donating a couple bucks if you can. I donate every time he makes an update just because of how thankful I am and because I couldn't do anything I do without Amoeba. I'm very thankful for him. So checking on Amoeba here, I am going to look for the ammo runes. So um, there is a couple here, but we're going to look at the legendary. So there is a legendary rage rune and glyph that have an ammo as a secondary that will give you an extra ammo attack. So for hunters, that means you get one more extra tap. Um, legendary ammo give you an extra tap each, um, hoping that they up those a bit. Um, it'd be really nice to have the legendary ammo with the rage generation or rage with legendary ammo. I'd be really excited to see that. Um, and then a mythic cloak has a legendary or mythic cloak has an ammo addition. A mythic rage has an ammo addition. Wisdom, there is a wisdom with an ammo addition. And the mythic ammos give plus two. So again, an extra couple of taps doesn't seem like it makes a difference, but when you're really counting taps, it, it makes all the difference in the world and having those extra things. So really excited about that. Uh, Tony says, hello, please to just give us Starbucks vouchers. Uh, please, we have, have we even started on my coffee addiction? I've been doing really well this summer and cutting back, but I'm, I'm missing it, not going to lie. Hey, Twilight, welcome back to the stream. Happy to see you again. Alrighty, so that's my how. Um, let's see if we can get him up to level 10, folks. That would be a nice thing. Um, like I said, I'm going to start breeding Frostbiter next event on my alt. My alt is definitely ahead on dragons versus behind because that's my favorite thing. Um, this person has food and they have a base setup that I love to hit. So this is Holland, Dutch, and L. This is a level 231 base, uh, 30 million defense power here. So, taking a look at it, I see that there's only one blue on the long, and it looks like she either has two buildings under construction or two missing things. Um, let's take a look. So, Twilight, if you're curious about what I stream, if you scroll down on my channel, which I hope that you're on right now, underneath there you can see my schedule. So, my schedule every week this summer looks like Mondays I stream at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, these are all Eastern time. Um, so, Eastern right now is just about 2 o'clock for me. So Mondays is at 6, Tuesdays at 1, Wednesdays at 6, Thursdays at 1, um, Fridays at 11 a.m. for me, Saturdays at 6 again, and Sundays at 11 a.m. So I do stream every day. If it is a day where War Dragons game is streaming to so the official stream, I will host them instead of streaming myself because I think that can typically be a lot more beneficial and it gives you guys a chance to win some prizes from them. So my stream schedule is there. You guys should also follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is over there. It's the Red Delilah. If you follow me on Twitter, Twitter. I also post updates every day about what I'm doing, when I'm thinking about the game, and when I'm going to be going live. So Texas I didn't stream yesterday because War Dragons Official was streaming yesterday, so I hosted them. My stream schedule covers uh, Wednesdays at 6, which is if War Dragons game is going to stream, it is also at Wednesday at 6. So my summer stream schedule, that's kind of like my day off, um, but I do stream if they're not streaming on that time. So yesterday I did not stream. I had dinner with my husband yesterday. It was nice. We went to a place called the Basement Burger Bar. And it's a build-your-own-burger place. And I really enjoy it. So I got a falafel burger. I'm a vegetarian, in case you're wondering. That's why I got falafel. Also, falafel's delicious. I like a pretzel bun. And I got, like, avocado and, and mushrooms and olives. And it was good. They also have the best sweet potato fries on the planet. Red loves some sweet potato fries. I like food. <laughs> <laughs> the War Dragons official streams are boring. Yeah, um, well, I, I have no other words. I can't disagree with you, to be honest. Um, I think one of the hardest parts about Pixel streams is she's such a low level and has been such a low level for so long that I don't find her streams to be particularly useful to me anymore. So watch her fly. Obsidian Dragons, I think, was the thing yesterday, but... Her flying Obsidian Dragons doesn't really translate to how Obsidian Dragons are to me, and I see my teammates fly them anyway. So for my needs, um, I will watch the stream if I have nothing else to do, and I, you know, it's she's entertaining for sure. Pixel's such a sweetheart and a lovely personality, but the content of their streams 
PG, I'm sure, has to be really careful of what they release information-wise and what they speak about. So I definitely understand that they have more restrictions. Whereas me, we talk about how this one little fuck is defending me when I'm trying to show you guys stuff. So it's a lot different atmosphere, for sure. An official stream versus, you know, mine. Must be you're a higher level. Yeah, so as you can see, um, I'm not sure if that's a question. Oh, must be your high level. Yes, so high level watching Pixel level 90 fly is kind of boring to me um, because I don't really learn anything. So it's nothing, nothing really in it for high levels to watch that other than the loot. But I have really bad luck, so I don't count my, count my eggs there. All right, let's take down this base. Let's have some fun here. All right, I'm noticing that there is a 41 on the small. It's a 40, two 41s on the long. And the rest seems pretty low level. And I'll check the back of the first log here. Whee! I love how's it. How's it such a lovely dragon? So I'm going to sand to slow us down unless it kills the tower. Oh, that red's in the naughty place. All right, I know that I have a fire coming around in the long, but again, if you sense a fire after it's um, already winding up, the fireball will still fire it, so this it's kind of useless, so I choose to blink usually instead. Ah, that perch, man. I did not double check the level of those perches. Naughty red, naughty red, naughty red. Okay. All right, we're doing borrowed time apparently because I suck. All right, we got a bit down. Arison said, your streams are the best for War Dragons, honestly. Oh, thanks. That is super, super kind of you. Thank you so much. I try. Um, one of the reasons I started streaming is because I did not see War Dragon streams that were really designed for people my level. So I love Coach. Coach does some great streams for sure. But again, Coach is a significantly lower level than me. So what goes on in his world, I'm already passed on both of my accounts. So it's not really relevant to me at this point. But I do watch to support Coach um, when I can as well. And he's just a hoot anyway. So Dan says, I hate the trees. Oh, I hate the trees so much. So when I was flying Mal's to show you guys some like how stuff with level one how, there's a little freaking cannon on Mal's at the very beginning that hides in the same spot. I should really just turn off trees because of how obnoxious they are. But have I learned my lesson yet? Nah. I'm stubborn. Super stubborn. Twilight says, what runes do you put on Akamora? Twilight, I'm a little confused on what dragon you're talking about. Could you be a little bit more specific? I think it might be the font, too, that you use. I'm not... What runes do you put on... Akamor? I'm not sure. Tony says, Owen oh, Red, I claimed the limited branch base boost last night. They do... They are a little more boosted. I told people to stop defending if you need to use it for anything. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. So what Tony's talking about, let's take a look real quick. Um, Tony brought up this question. Some apparently wanted my wood. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send my wood to my main account just for safekeeping. So uh, a lot of times we call this bouncing or you can air bank things. If long as resources are in the air, people can't take it. So... Transfer things to your roommate or to your teammates. Always make sure you ask first. So obviously I don't need to ask myself because I know myself. So Tony's talking about the limited branch runes here. Um, let's take a look. So these limited time down here, these boosts. And the question came up is, do they stack? So Tony, it seems like Tony says, yes, they do. So I would love to see an official response from PG to see if, you know, we're actually coming down and getting, I don't know, 12% on each or if it's just up to five. So I'm curious on how that works, but Tony says it looks like the stack. Twilight says on Amarok. All right, fantastic questions. Let's take a look at Amarok real quick here. 
So, um, in order to, oh, we can look at Imrak through my den. That's right. Boop, boop, boop. Amarok is a legendary orange warrior. Where is he? Oh, there he is. So let's take a look at Amarok. So Amarok has explosive shield, cure poison, archer resistant, cannon resist. I would definitely put your explosive shield runes on Amarok. Um, depending on what season dragons you've gotten. Amarok is an absolute beast. Double resists are fantastic. So if you have Amarok, I would definitely recommend putting explosive shield runes on him and then um, archer and cannon resist runes. So um, for sure. When I was a lower level when I had Amarok, this was before flat cannons and whatnot, I also put lightning resist runes on him because I always equipped lightning resist um, because that really helped a lot with Amarok. But remember, if you have a lightning resist rune on him and lightning resist is not equipped, lightning resist rune does nothing. So it's, I would look at putting explosive shield runes and then your archer and cannon resist runes on Amarok to up his resist to those uh, spell up his resist to those towers so again the natural resist is 70 percent um, of the damage from the tower is removed so if you're flying Anrock, take out the archer and the cannon towers completely last so you want to let those hit you while you take down the higher level damage towers tony says 12 percent towers show 42 percent when you tap on them very cool tony that's that's really exciting to know i'm you know, because your original 30% boost plus 12. I'm, that's really neat to know. I had no idea about that limited time branch. Unfortunately, I don't have really have the sigils to spare. Meh. But, oh well. So, Twilight, I hope that answers your question. Get a little bit more food before we keep flying. We have two Tengu missions left. Oh, Tengu. Oh, Tengu. He's been capped and... I lack motivation a lot of times to fly cap dragons. I don't know. It's like, eh. You know, him and Aster and Snowdrop and suck him and Nightshade and Scorchel are all capped. And then I've been really lazy with Zamorak. Because I'm so excited about How's It. I love How's It. All right, let's go steal more people's stuff. Mama Sherry. Ooh, Mama Sherry has a hollow base. Um, you can see there are no blues on the first island, and then there's only one blue on the second island. Um, it looks like she has built correctly, I would say. So she's got her high levels on the first island. Uh, it's just unfortunate that she has a 31 cannon there instead of a blue. I would really think that'd make a difference. So let's go have some fun with Mama Sherry. I love your base, babe. Boop. So what I'm going to do is disable that red, and then I'm going to immediately double up here. Fortunately, I did not cast Crumble to Dust appropriately. Building up some rage, building up some firepower, double sanding when I can. So there are some spots where you can double sand. By double sand, I mean you tap in between the tower and it sands both. The back of the Long Island here is one of the best spots. So that red was, you can either sand right next to it. And if you're far enough away, you can even sand all three towers, which is fun. Arison said, my internet is messing up. Oh no, how's your internet messing up? That's unfortunate. I'm addicted to the internet, and that's not even a joke. I spend entirely too much time online. Either in War Dragons, I'm on the forums a bunch. Um, I like to check Imager a lot. Not a Facebook person. I don't really have a Facebook. I have a Facebook, um, but it's just so my parents leave me alone. They're like, I just want to know about your life, honey. Why don't you tell me about what's going on? I want to see pictures of what you're doing in everyday life. And I just don't. Try to text my parents instead to keep them happy. So how did all right? That was a pretty good base too. I'm impressed with your base, Sherry. But unfortunately, how is a beast? So 96%, that is 60 levels above my own. And then using my main account here as cleanup, let's come up with Zaru here, the spider monkey. Thanks for the follow, Max, so kind. So this is the spider monkey dragon. You can see him flying here. Whoop. It's a spider monkey, yo. 
So Zaru is a Garnet Legendary Hunter. He has Steel Essence, um, Desiccating Sandstorm, um, Crystalline Shield, and Spitfire Turret Resist. So him and Frostbiter are really good to have on your roster. They're also the parents for ANA. And the reason I say they're good to have on your roster is if you see a uh, Fire Heavy base or an Ice Heavy base, it kind of gives you a little bit more option you know, to pick a dragon that has one of those resists. Um, so he's super helpful. I love both of those dragons from Garnet here. Alrighty. Oh, he's so close. Oh, just missed it. Alright, one more, guys. Now I think we'll be ready for how's it to be fed to ten. It's looking for 40 plus XP. Hey, we're looking for food, probably because we're going to have to feed him soon. Erisa said, I switched to using mobile data because my Wi-Fi is acting up. Now I can watch the stream. <laughs> well, I'm glad you can watch the stream now. Happy to have you. Oh, man. I think we're, I think I'm hilarious. I had this conversation with my husband the other day. I think I'm absolutely hilarious. And he's like, honey, I hate to say it this way, but you're hilarious. I mean, you're just, you're just hilarious. My husband and I are a, we're, we're a pair. We're two peas in a pod. We're both pretty freaking funny. I told my husband that I thought it'd be really funny to stream Lego games. I think Lego games and Lego movies are the funniest things on the planet. Like, I cannot express why they just crack me up and I just lose my shit laughing left and right at Lego things. And so I told my husband this. I was like, we should stream, like, Lego games or something similar. And my husband's like, honey, no one wants to watch a live stream of Lego games. But I was so disappointed because Lego games are kind of boring to p other people apparently but I think they're so funny it's so, like we're playing Lego Harry Potter right now and there's no dialogue they just rah, 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 and they do symbols and stuff and it's funny <laughs> um, and it's instead you're a really good streamer you know a lot about the game and you're definitely not boring hey thanks that's such a compliment Arison. Um, I try to make myself knowledgeable for my team and I'm glad I'm not boring but that's because I'm awesome <laughs> humor um Nitesser said, I love to smash everything in Lego games. Me too! Ah, oh, that's what I did. So in the Lego Harry Potter, um, when you go to Gringotts and everything, that's where the bonus levels are the second time you go there. And they had this bonus level that was like the London town, like in the muggle world where Harry Potter lived. And he could just drive in cars and smash everything. So my husband was in like the double decker Lego London bus there. And I was like in this little car and we're like zooming around, smashing all the plants and smashing everything and just... Oh, it cracks me up. It's so much fun. <laughs> Can't tell I like Lego games at all. Harrison said, I love Lego games. The last time I played was Lord of the Rings. <gasps> I have to play that one. Harry Potter was so exciting. We just bought um, the Harry Potter year one through seven. And my husband was playing um, Lego Marvel superheroes, I think, the other day. But we'll have to look at Lord of the Rings. Mm, I love Lego games. Have you guys seen Lego Batman? Uh, it's so funny. It is so funny. Uh, Lego games are hilarious. Like, uh, anyway, more dragons. Uh, dragons. Huh? Computers. Yeah. Well, apparently one of my cords is weird. Um, Twilight said I made a brain good off of your guide. Thanks for helping me with that. Hey, you're welcome, Twilight. Anything I could do to help? Let me know. Wait, Arison. Are you telling me there's a Lego Batman game? I need this. I need this right now. We need to take care of this, Harrison. Deal? Deal. Alright, we're going to take care of this. In the meantime, let's fly in Hell's Kitty. Hell's Kitty. Oh, oh. oh, man. Now I'm thinking about Lego games, and I'm really excited right now, and I just need to fly dragons. I'm glad you guys don't think I'm weird, because my husband thought I was absolutely crazy when I was talking about Lego games. But I think they are the funniest things. Pretty sure it's on Steam. I'll have to take a look. I like to play on PlayStation a little bit more than Steam for Lego games just because the controls are a wee bit easier, but that's just me. Ah, shoot. So here I am talking to get really excited about Lego Batman, and I mess up flying how. Like, do you see that complete fail? <sighs> that's okay. This is my Desi Doot Doo. -doo. Boop. 
Love me some earthquake. All right, so there's no storm. It looks like covering the red right away. So we're going to do some tabbies with the reds. <laughs> there is a defender, and they are actually really defending. Good for you, man. Support your teammates. Unless you're on Tony's team. <laughs> Tony's team isn't allowed to defend. Because you guys never defend. Yet for some reason when you're like when I'm attacking, you're like, oh, let's defend red. For some reason, we just don't want this one person to attack Tony. Everyone else is okay. Just not just not red. That's okay. You know what? I get it. I'm glad you guys are trying to protect your leader in these instances. All right, and clear through Desi. So there's a Lego Batman 3B on Gotham. Oh my gosh. You guys are getting me so excited about Lego games right now. I can't even, I can't even. I don't, I don't even know if there's an end to that sentence. I can't even. I'm really excited now. Play Lego Batman 3 and Steam. Uh -huh. I love Lego games. Um, so currently I obviously play War Dragons all the time. Just... I'm on constantly. Sometimes I'm just kind of hanging out, doing nothing. Um, play War Dragons. I'm finishing up Horizon Zero Dawn right now. Horizon Zero Dawn is wonderful. And Lego games. Um, dragon related question. Get me off of this Lego topic. Arison said, how long did it take you to get to Garnet tier? Too long. Um, so another thing to keep in mind is that my main has been around long enough to remember... Well, I've been around long enough to remember when green was the max tier, so I've had the advantage of kind of going along with the tiers a little bit more. Um, so Obsidian just came out, and I'm in Emerald right now, and as more tiers come out and they are more expensive, I'll slowly start falling behind more, but I don't think I can give you an adequate description of how long it took me to Garnet tier because I took the long way to get here, um, just because of the nature of my account here. So it's unfortunate. My leader burns a lot. And it's funny to watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope you mean base. I I don't know. Sometimes Twilight Rose, your your font is a little funny to me, but that's okay. Alright, so how's it is ready to feed and he's just 358, so another 200 k and we are good. So let's take a look here. I have that on my main, so I could send that to myself and we could just hang out and be boring. But let's go hunt. Let's go hunt, people. Let's steal everyone's food. So now I don't care about max XP. If we see a max XP, that's great. See a 93k there, and we're going to go steal it from them. Ooh, it looks like a fun base. We're going to use second. Thick. Oh, yes, this base. There was an event um, once. It was the skirmish event. Uh, Infinite Battles, I think, was the actual event name. And it hasn't come around in a very long time. But the basic way the event was set up were like mini wars constantly. And each team had a leader and a flag bearer. And the flag bearer was the highest level on your team. And the leader was obviously the leader of your team. And the leader was worth more points when you hit them. And the flag bearer was worth more points when you hit them. And until a flag bearer went down on your team, um, the other team couldn't score as many points. So, unfortunately, the last couple of times that we had War of Infinite, or Infinite Battles, the skirmish event, whatever you want to call it, when we did that all but one time, I was both the leader and the highest level on my team, and so my f base would just flash red, so it was just constantly getting blown apart. And so, uh, Twilight talking about her leader's base getting burned down, just that's what it reminds me of, is when I couldn't even log on. Like, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't collect resources, I couldn't even function because my base would just constantly flash. So I kind of miss that part of that event because it really came down to a lot of scale and flying. Um, but at the same time, I don't miss my base doing that. But I'm not the highest level on my team. Not by much. Well, not by a lot. So that's okay. The event can come back now. But PG said this quarter they're looking at um, bringing out just a few more events. So I'm looking forward to that. So thank you, PG. Oop. All right, let's see. 
Where are the blueberries? I don't have any blueberries today. I'm super upset. I have to go grocery shopping. I know. Blueberries are my favorite snack. They're such a good snack as well. It's 88k. Let's see if we can find a bit more than that. I am getting hungry though. <gasps> oh, look at that fat base. <sighs> All right, we're coming for you. 152k. All right, let's come out with Aster on this one. All right. Do I enjoy being a leader? Um, yes and no. There are pros and cons to everything in life, and that will always be my personal opinion. Um, when it comes to things like being a leader, but I've tried and I have been, there's the cloak bug. I have been not the leader before and it's very frustrating for me. I'm in, so I'm a teacher and we've done all these personality tests and things and they've done it where that you relate your personality to an animal. And so they talk about how being collaborative and cooperative personalities and leader personalities and aggressive leader personalities, things like that. So the animal that my personality was strongly associated with was a shark. So very much do what I do or do what I say um, because, not because I just want to be in charge, just because I oftentimes feel that not a lot of people actually know what's going on. And so I enjoy being the leader because then I have control over the knowledge I am giving to my team. And I'm usually 99% sure that the knowledge I am giving my team is accurate. So I enjoy being helpful in that regard. And I just couldn't not be a leader at this point. I've been a leader for over two years and I struggle really hard. So what is the name? I honestly couldn't tell you. I take so many personality tests at work. It's not even funny. We take it for PD every um, August. So I'll check at the end of the month and see what do they say. It was like the animal personality test something. I don't remember. I was going to say dragon. Nope, I was a shark. So what they actually had made us do was they put all the same animal in one group. So there was like these, all these really passive people that I've identified as passive in one group. And then all the sharks were in one group. So all these really heavy mega type leaders in one group. And it was just nuts. It was, it was a shit show. That's what that was. Yay for taking people's food. Aww. Aza is level 10. Look at that. Look at that majestic little beast. He is catching up in power fast to many of the dragons. I did one a while back and got tiger, but I can't remember why. Hmm. If I remember, I think there was like owl and koala and turtle, shark. I don't remember what else was in ours. I think this one was two, three years ago. Now I can't remember. I take, I seriously take them every year. And then there's the color personality test and... I'm a weird set of colors for a teacher. So there are, let me see if I can remember, there are four colors in the color personality test. There is blue, gold, orange, and green. Um, see if I can remember these. Green is really science-minded and really logical, uh, typically bad spellers, uh, but you can follow math problems really well type of thing. Hey, thanks for following, darling. Um, what else? Oh, sorry. Um, I get really easily distracted, apparently. So orange is really creative. Green is really like science-minded. Blue is really compassionate and really empathetic and warm. And gold was hyper-organized, I think was the thing. And most teachers are typically blue and gold and, you know, really compassionate, really organized, all these things. Um, and I am definitely a green-orange, so I'm very science-minded. I can't spell to save my life. If you're on my team or ever seen my team chats, you know this very well. <laughs> um, but I can't spell. I'm very, very logical and um, very creative in that sense. So, yeah, I have to force myself to be organized. Um, so it's a logical choice to be organized rather than something else. All right, how's it, Sved? And let us do this. We are going to switch devices. You guys can hang out on my main for a little bit. Oh, I'll just leave you on the screen. So what I'm doing is I am loading up my other account. This is my account that is on Aria, so we'll no longer be on Ruleth. Let me see if I can remember this. I would load it on the account that it's actually, or the iPad that I have that account on, but that iPad is um, 
Tony can tell you is exceptionally slow. And by exceptionally slow, I mean it crashes, I'd say, once every 20 or it does not crash once every 20 loads so it's a pain in the butt the graphics are awful um so what i'm doing now is i'm loading that account on my nice ipad so you guys can see some really nice graphics um and take a look at some old school divines i love me some old school divines so let's go back to my ipad or two the game is loading so again you are seeing my third account this one i do not play very often just because of the nature of the ipad it's on like i said but it has um a lot of old dragons because this is my original account uh, that i haven't played in months really Arison said i can tell by your spreadsheets very organized is a bit of an understatement digital organization is definitely a skill set of mine so you can tell i get hit a lot let's collect some stuff i got some mail Oh, see, there's Tony up there again. Some good names on the team. All right. Oh, <laughs> you can tell I don't play this account much, huh? But let's show you some pretties, shall we? Is there anyone out there who has an or who knows the name of an old school divine that you'd really want to see before I pull some up? I'm just going to try to clear the screen so we can't see as many of these things here. So if you do see a dragon you want to know, let me know. Let's scroll over to Divines here. So like I said, I have not played this account since fall of last year. Um, and by played, I mean actually look, log in and do things. Simply because the account or the iPad this account is on typically is really slow. So here are my old school Divines. Um, so this season that we're in right now is the fourth season we've ever had. Before this, we've had a couple of different divine setups. We have had flat out where you have to earn um, the fragments and events. We've had divines that if you got a certain score, you could breed. There were ones that they were breedable for a certain time during breeding events. All types of crazy stuff until we got to the one. So I'm going to walk you through some of these divines and then show you my absolute favorites, um, including the one that I miss more than anything on the, in the world. Just anything. So Lith is the very first divine, I believe. If I remember correctly, uh, Buddy and a different couple other people can remind me. It looks like a bug. It's nasty looking. You can see Necroth the People's Dragon, which I obviously did not get very high in this account because I couldn't care less. Um, Necroth was the introduction to how we do divines now. Let's take a look at Blue. So one way that the divines typically were bred is you'd get one divine another divine, and then they bred together to get a gold divine. So remember, this was when gold tier was the max tier in the game, well before platinum, so everyone wanted more gold legendaries to fill out their roster. So Jackalus is a parent, Thrakes is a parent, Yazi, um, and... don't think Grumble was a parent. So Thrakes here is a warrior, blue tier, um, this was one of the hardest dragons to get, and this is the first dragon that I really pushed myself to get. Crappy, yes, but you could easily get the green dragon that he paired with, which is Sam Knight here. Sam Knight was the easy one, so PG made sure that the more useful dragon, remember this is only one tier below max at the time, um, everyone could get this divine, so Thunderstorm, Reverse Projectiles, uh, and Freeze. Great dragon! So everyone could get Sam Knight um, pretty easily through events. You'd earn egg fragments towards him. And then if you got Thrakes, which you could only get Thrakes frags through gold chests, you would breed them together and get Dima. Dima Arison is the dragon that I miss more than anything in the world. If they made an Emerald Dima, I would lose my mind and they have come pretty close um just with the spell set given but steel essence which i love cloak death gaze and archer resist so imagine if you will a time when dimma came out this is the most powerful dragon in the game there are no fire turrets there are no flat cannons and there are no ice turrets so the only really high damaging towers people had are lightning cannon and archer those are typically what's used you can slap on a lightning resist and Dimmo would just rip through bases left and right. Dimmo was an incredible dragon and she is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And Death Gaze, come on. I used Dimmo for a long time just because of the Death Gaze. It was nuts. Another set of parents we could talk about, I believe it was Bixie and Jack, Bixie and Yazzie, I think. I have to remember right. So again, one was easy to get, one was hard to get. 
and I pushed really hard so I could get this dragon purely for looks, and that's Meriden. Da -da -da. So Meriden is a gold tier dragon, thunderstorm, invincibility shield, um, fireball, and lightning resist. Again, this is before fire, ice, and flak towers, so great dragon. Everyone really dim dismissed Meriden, but I loved Meriden, um, also because he's absolutely gorgeous. So, um, a couple other things. I didn't get Fenrock, which was a warrior at the time, because this was when, this was the last gold divine that was released before Platinum came out, and we were already being hinted at that a new tier was coming out, and so at this time I was like, well, it's a warrior, I don't really want it, but it has a double resist. Again, please remember, this was the time before Flak, Ice, and um, Fires, so I had two resists, add a lightning resist on this, and this thing was impossible to shoot down for a couple of, I'd say almost about a month. Fenrock was impossible to shoot down. It's, it's nuts. Addison, I'm glad to hear it. Hunters are just, they're the shit, man. Hunters just rip. So those are a couple of my old school divines. Magmore, of course, was a pretty divine. Just pretty. And then Yazi, and then this one I called Rave Kanara. I've talked about Rave Kanara before, because um, I do have her on other accounts. Oh. This base sucks, too, so we're defending myself. But um, Rave Kanara was a um, inner fire boosting dragon. So if you had Kanara, you got extra inner fire points on events just by having her. And so you could level her up bit by bit. So the more frags you got for her, the higher level she was. And the higher level she was, the more inner fire bonuses you got. So I think... You could get like up to like four times inner fire, and so you could also use three inner fires on all your dragons, but it's acted like you also had four base. It was great. Um, Kanara really made, Rave Kanara really made it better. And I enjoyed Rave Kanara because it, it made events a lot more manageable because you could use your rubies effectively on her to get better points. So I wish PG would do something like Rave Kanara again. I'm gonna quit because I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna let the AI reload some more super shots here. Oh, I see why he's hitting me. <laughs> see if there's anyone. See, you could see I only have 13 out of the next 30 needed for Ave Kanara. So I think I had a three times XP boost. I'm going to use this food just because I don't want this guy to get it, to be completely honest. Because I'm petty. <laughs> it cracked me up. So Rave Kanara, yeah, got, I think, 3 or 3.5 boost um, at this level I had him on my um, this account. So... Those are some old school divines. I do want to show you a little bit on Flying Dima. Oops. Just collected all my food. I don't have enough food to fly. Let's fly a little bit on Dima. So remember, this is only a gold tier dragon. Um, let's have some fun. Let's see how well... Remember, gold tier dragon does on Allah. <laughs> this is going to be funny. I've never done this before, by the way. Say, good luck, Red. <laughs> so this is the Lady Red. This is my old account. Old, old, old account. It is on Aria. Landing that farm. Slow me down. Let's cloak for a little bit. <laughs> Good luck. Hey, for a gold tier dragon, I think Rave Canaris or um, Dima's doing pretty freaking great. Look at this. Come on. You have to admit, <laughs> this is a pretty sweet dragon for the time. Gold tier. Gold tier, guys. I challenge you to find a gold tier dragon that can do this shit. <sighs> I know I'm not going to be able to solo this whole base, so I'm trying to use my spells wisely. Yeah, this is a freaking gold tier dragon, guys! <laughs> Dim is no longer available, but come on. No other gold tier dragon can do this. I, I, no other gold tier dragon can do this. Not on Allah. There's no way. Oh, Dima. Oh, I miss Dima so, so much. What do you guys think? 
You think Dim is doing pretty well? So Cloak and Death Gaze, it's all I'm using, man. I'm not using Steel Essence just because she doesn't have the firepower to take down these towers. The only way she can take down these towers is with Death Gaze. So 60%! First time through, I've never done that before. Dim on Ala, a gold tier dragon, 60%. If that's not an amazing dragon, I don't know what it is. Harrison just asked a great question. Why did you make a new account and stop using this one? So I have a total of four accounts. Um, I have my 251, I have my 138, I have this one, which is a 168, and I have a low level 30 account that I use to test things. One of the reasons I abandoned this account um, in the first place is it is absolute crap. This account is, is so bad because... <sighs> How to say, I need to find a way to insult myself. And it, it, no one likes being self-destructive. So, or self-deprecating. So this is a 169. And, you know, this was before fire turrets came out, before ice turrets came out, before fleck. And this was also before Meba came out. This is before we really learned that you're supposed to have a short base versus a long base. And all of these uh, things in the game that I did so wrong that I could never catch up. So um, to show you a little bit on this base... Actually, it'll be easier if I can show you on my iPhone. So, oops. So I need to do, there we go. I'm gonna switch to my phone here and so I can show you the bases from the attack display. That'll just be a little bit easier. So uh, what I'm pulling up right now is I want to show you what the base of this account looks like. This lady read my original account. Switch to my phone here. So this is the base of my 169 on Aria. It is awful. Um, the defense power is incredibly weak. The setup is so poor. Um, you know, just, I already had a long base to start with. I have so many towers in storage. And then when I tried to fix it and I started slowly fixing things and lightning towers are the best tower and then they released ice turrets and then they released fire, tur fire, or fire turrets and it's just, I was really overwhelmed and how behind I was because of those severe mistakes I made at the beginning and all these new things that are coming out were just making my base worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and I couldn't salvage it and I was just absolutely miserable and I f was always down on myself about having bad dragons, about having a bad account because I spent so much, so many tokens on Meriden and Dima, um, you know, they're 50k tokens-ish a peach. Um, a piece and it you know a little bit more depending or a little bit less on your chances that I spent so many tokens on them and then platinum came out and I was like I just I just I was so far behind and I couldn't see myself catching up and I was really disappointed in my base and so I actually made my original alt for um, resource hunting and it slowly, I was like, man, my alt is way better than this. And so I started leveling up that a lot more and working on that. And I was like, wow, I'm really ahead in dragons. And so I just kind of threw my full weight into other accounts. And once I didn't need this one anymore, I abandoned it because the base isn't worth defending. Um, it's really weak for its level. The roster is really bad. So I honestly just keep it because I'm very. it's very sentimental to me. It's my very first account. So that's why. Um... How long did it take to level up, up again? It was actually a lot faster. Uh, the second account I always find is a little bit better because I learned so much from my mistakes. I built a really short base. I prepared for new towers to be released. Um, all of these things. And so I'm, I made a lot... I was a lot better just because I was so much no more knowledgeable and I knew exactly what mistakes I'd made in the past. So... Um, Tony says, in my mute is sent three messages in the last three minutes. Uh, that's the first message I've seen in a while, Tony. The tomato message... I don't know too many messages. Um, Zeus, what did you see yesterday? Um, yeah, no tomato message on my side either, Tony. So I think I just abandoned this account because I was so far behind and it was more painful for me to play this account than it was for me to have it. And I was really disappointed in myself and I didn't see myself salvaging, you know, what it could have been until it was way past 300 and by that time more towers would be out and I'd be more disappointed with myself and I just I wanted to have a positive experience of the game and this this account wasn't giving me that experience um with the competitive team that I wanted to be on so 
that's why. All right, I am switching out of my... Is there any, anything else you guys want to see on my original account? Um, can't really show you too much. I have a lot of cool divines. That's about it. Um, it's got some older avatars, but nothing spectacular. So, Lady Red, that's my, my first account. My very first account. <laughs> So you certainly showed us tomato nose yesterday. I'm saying I'm buying a tomato for dinner. What kind of tomato? That's important, Tony. We need to talk about that. So I'll show you guys this. So this is the Lady Red. Look at uh, 8.9 million check power. You can see the highest level tower is a 40. It's really evenly built. It's a poor base. And then let's take a look at my current alt account. My baby. There we are. All right, and take a look at this alt. So it has, what is this, 435 level towers, 5-6, um, and that's the max tower can have. It's at 138, and it's really similar attack power um, compared to my 169. So that's 30, tier, 30 levels different. This account is also farther now than my 169. My 169 is the step right before Itaru because again, I wasted so many tokens, haven't played it in months. Um, and this account just got housed it, so it's just not worth it. There's no point in going back. Tony says that account is one of the is one of a kind for the dragons. I'd want it any time over a well bit base one. Well, that's why I keep it, Tony. Like it's really sentimental to me, and I like having the dragons just you know for fun, and I enjoy it. I do. It's a sweet account, but it just wasn't worth it um, for what it, my team needed, and my team needed me to be a little bit more of an example to them on how to build a good base than I could have been for them using that account. So. <sighs> gotta do what I gotta do. So this is my current alt. Um, you can see much better built base. Um, doesn't have a flat cannon yet just because I refuse to level up until I frost. Typical things. So I am switching out of that account there on Arya. Hi, Mohammed. Is that Mohammed? Mahamud? It's hard to read. You guys are so tiny on my screen. But hi, how's it going? Welcome to the stream, stream darling. What's next, guys? I have some fame alties to do, or we can go harass some people. What is it that you guys want to do? I'm here for you. I am your streaming guide, my friends. We can talk about the event again. We can talk about dragons. We can talk about breeding, obsidians, whatever you want. I'm here. Probably be on eh, for another 20 minutes or so. Um, that's when our scheduled end time is. And like I said, I am a fighting a cold. And so... I want to make sure that I'm not pushing myself too, too much. Because we do stream just about every day. So, All right. I'm trying to load my mini back up. It's being slow. There we go. Anything? Anything you guys want to see? And you guys are currently looking at my main. My main base again. Is, there's all 45s, 47s. Logos. I'm not sure what you mean by logos, Twilight. Can you give me a little bit more information there? This is my dance and move. Not very exciting anyway. No goes what? <laughs> you guys are funny. Crap, I can't spell. <laughs> well, when you figure out what you want to spell, let me know. We'll go hit stuff for you. That font is just so curly Q there, Twilight. Got like the Disney font going on type of thing. <laughs> Zeus. Is Raging Island really good? Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. All right. I'll show you why. Tony. Tony, if you're there, will you hit me with your expert Kanara, please? Pretty please? Pretty please? I want to show Arison what I'm talking about. So I made Tony hit me two days ago as well. Plus, Tony, bring me your expert Kanara, please. Please, 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 please. Please, please. And I want to show why Rage Drain Island does so well. Um, Rage Drain Island does really well, except for it struggles a little bit with um, Zamorak. Just if this person actually knows how to fly Zamorak. So, Tony's incoming. So, 
here we go, guys. I'm going to double defend uh, because my base typically has three defenders for war. So if Zeus wants to pop it and defend too, you're welcome to. And I'll show you why the Rage Drain is a good thing. So I'm going to go hover over the ocean with both my counts here. Guys, be ready to see the downfall of Canaris. Uh, you're going to see Canaris drop like a freaking stone, man. I'm going to light defend, so super shots, a handful of boosts, um, whereas if I'm in war, I'd be dropping them a lot fast. Having both accounts defend at the same time means I can drop hammers a lot easier because I can make sure I time it really well. And I also can see if one account's behind the other, it helps me make sure that I'm not wasting items if there is a network delay. So here we go. Going to defend. All right. See this rage drain? Watch his rage. I'll go bye bye. All right. So now Canaris has zero rage, and his rage is frozen for the next island. Dropping boost here. I focus on my flak and ice because I know those are the highest level. I'm gonna make sure Tony can't get that flak down, and that flak is going to take him down with just a couple of hammers here to keep it up. And there we go. So that is an expert Canaris. Um, I'm only a 251. Max tower I have is 47. I only have three level 47 towers. The rest are 45s. And dropped at 28%. That is simply because of a Rage Drain Island. It's the only reason why. Um, <coughs> to show you a little bit of a difference, I get <laughs> RIP that for show. Tony would make a much bigger impact here without Rage Drain. So, Zeus, will you jump in and <laughs> defend me again? But this time we're not going to touch the Rage Drain Island. And I'm not going to touch it either. So, let's see if we can show this appropriately. All right, Tony, hit me again. I'm not going to touch my Rage Drain. And Zeus is going to get in too. Zeus. Um, and he's not going to touch my Rage Drain either. So, we're going to completely ignore this island. We're only going to defend um, on this long and beyond. So, Come on, Tony. Let's see what the difference is. What should be on a Rage Drain Island? A Rage Drain Island should only be mages. Um, Low-level mages. You can see I have a level 1 here. Uh, level 1. And then a level 25 and 23. Those are just my leftover Rage um, Mage Towers. So I would say 4 mages is best if you do 2 and 2. I have 3 blues because that's what I had at the time. But just rage or just mages. So again, I'm not going to touch my rage drain island there, which means no super shots are going to fire. I am going to simply focus on this long island and let's see what a difference it makes for Tony. So I am going to tap some mages here. I'm going to defend the same way, and let's see how much further Tony can get. So two hammers. I've already dropped the same number of hammers as I did before. And you can see a little bit of a change. So unfortunately for Tony, um, it still didn't go very well because he's going against triple defenders. But you can see that it gave him more time and more rage to be able to cast spells. And if he would have had a leader for that too, it would have made a big difference. <laughs> Yay, Zeus. So the difference here, we had 34 versus 28%. So the Rage Drain Island did make it easier. And I also dropped more hammers the second time um, because he was flying longer. So it just... Very big difference. So with three defenders, that, that is a big difference, I think. So Rage Drain Island. Ooh, didn't mean to push revenge on Tony. <laughs> um, Rage Drain Island is worth it. It is absolutely worth it. So I don't know how it stacks up undefended. Like I said, I'm online way too much. And so defended is how my base usually is run because I have two accounts and people like to defend me. Um, but Rage Drain Island is all the rage. Get it? Get what I did there? See so, yeah. But I'll show you a little bit on how some of our bigger bases are set up on Ruleth. Um, give you a little bit of a rundown on why things go. Tony, I need rubies as well. Tony's giving me three rubies. Let's look at Poppy. Poppy is our longest standing whale. Poppy has been, it looks like barcode. Poppy has been on our team since level 30 or below. It's been on our team for well over two years now. Ariston said, is it worth it at any level? Yes. Uh, Mage, Rage Drain Island is worth it at every single level. Because dragons are typically as good as their spells. And so if you have a dragon that um, doesn't have spells to fly, do that. Um, 
Uh, if you are a lower level, maybe start with two mages to see how it goes so you don't waste too many resources. Again, just leave them at level one, see how you like it. Um, but at my level, I usually have all of them. So if we take a look at Poppy's base here, um, Poppy cannot really afford to put out mages as much um, just because of how many mages he already has built. I will definitely talk to him to see if he wants to add a Rage Drain Island because he's one, two, three, four. He already has five of his uh, blues out and I believe he has four of his reds with maybe one under construction. I'm not sure. Um, but Poppy's base is massive. It has, you know, f uh, four full islands of level 50s plus an island that's pretty close to level 50s. Um, so this is our big island here. And then let's take a look at more Rulithians. So, <laughs> Tony says I'll do it in a little bit. <laughs> By the way, is not to a defense strategy confidential? Um... We've been talking about this a lot on our team. We are preparing for some or a particular team in our league this time to def uh, declare on us. And we know that the team does have some neck to us. And we have been trying a little bit. Hey, welcome to the stream, darling. Um, we've been talking about how to defend an against Nectua, and you just have to steal its rage. There is literally no hope except for rage and hammers. Um, we've tested this a few times, both on the flying side and the defending side. So steal its rage. Um, so on Poppy's base, for instance, I would ignore boosting um, or using my super shots in the first couple of towers and just try to take that rage. Because if Nectua can use um, the vines, uh, it just there's no hope. Uh, really, right now, there's no hope because Obsidian Dragons are too powerful for the levels we have out right now. So Noxious Vines, man. It's it's ripping bases apart. It's it's a struggle. So mages, 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 mages all over the place. Yep. That's about all I got. Let's take a look at a different type of sub. Let's take a look at Lord's base. Lord AF, such a sweetheart. He was such a generous and kind person. And he definitely moved up a couple of levels last fortification. There he is. Lord. We like Lord. So Lord here also does not have a Mage Drain Island. And you can immediately tell why if you count the number of um, Mage Towers on his base. So if you take a look here, he already has five of five out. So he can't afford to put any extras forward. Um, I do think the red is important to keep with his farms. Because it does keep a little last moment of resistance to try to keep his farms up. But Lord's base is also a pain to take down. Zeus is there. Yes, we could take a look at Zeus's base. Let's see if Zeus... Zeus, do you have a good base? Lord as fuck. Yeah, that's exactly his name. <laughs> Tony's on it. Nectu is a great backup dragon, lol. Uh, Copperhead. Um, Nectu is a great everything dragon. Um, and it's really hard to shoot down. Zeus, where are you? There he is. Let's look at Zeus's base. Hmm? Hmm? Ooh, Zeusy. Doing all right. Got a couple of flax on there. Pros and cons. Always pros and cons, right, Zeus? But he does all right. Can definitely see that his stronger towers, he did stronger towers on his long. I totally agree with that 100%. He's got lightnings up front. I'm sure that helps with Canaris. <laughs> Zeus, you crack me up. Zeus, I would switch on your small island here. Um, I would consider switching the front 25 cannon with the 33, um, what's it called? Fire turret. <laughs> the cannon and the fire turret switch sides. And then switch your storm and your um, red. So that way your red covers everything and then your storm can cover the 33 fire still. But yeah, Zeus, you're doing all right here. Not bad. I like that he has ices and storms and mages covering all of his flax. I really enjoy that. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, um, last minute questions on the event? <laughs> Everyone knows I don't like this event. My voice and my throat is really going. Like I said, I've been fighting a cold. Um, so I'm pretty hyped up on some cold medicine right now, plus a beer. So I'm not sure if I could talk much longer. <laughs> pardon so I'm gonna head out pretty soon here but if there's something else you guys want to see I'll give it a few minutes um, to see if you have any other questions or last minute comments or see if you guys have any good jokes faux show 
All right. Zeus is a badass. Of course Zeus is a badass. He's a freaking Greek god, yo. Thank you. Like I said, I'm fighting it. It's a summer cold, so it's not too bad. And I get plenty of naps a day. My husband says that I'm part cat because all I do is sleep. I like sleeping. <laughs> sleep in War Dragons. Faux show. Faux show. But it's fun hanging out with you guys. I enjoy streaming because it's nice to talk to other dragon people. My husband always says that War Dragons has been the bane of our marriage. Because <laughs> I've been playing War Dragons longer than I've been married, actually. Which is hilarious to me. Uh, what even is this event for? What even is this event for? Well, this event is just to earn sigils and stuff. And get ready for the season. Uh, I hate this event. This event sucks. I am part cat, Tony. All the sleeping I do. I mean, come on. It fits my personality. This is not getting out of my head anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, so, Twilight, again, I'm not quite sure what you're asking here. What even is this event for? So, again, this is the Tug of War event. Capture the flag. Doop -ba -doop. Uh, Zeus, she's using a different type of font. That's why it looks a little bit weird. She has like a Disney font going on. So, if you are on the leader side of things. So, you're going to see the event from a leader's perspective here because that is how I have it. There we go. So again, your goal is to capture the flag, and if the flag goes over the green line, that means you've obtained it. You have to beat the other team by 1,000 points. Uh, if it goes over the red line, that means your team has taken it. If it is between the green and the red line, that means it is neutral, and a flag neither gets stolen or rewarded. So things like that. No, Zeus, it's English. It's just a different font. Um... This event is pretty straightforward, pretty much sucks. Uh, the uh, energy reset is every six hours with the round. We no longer have a bonus meter and things like that. I remember a teammate accidentally turned that keyboard font on and couldn't turn it off. <laughs> Copperhead, that would be unfortunate. Twilight says it's, it's an app called Rainbow Key. That's very interesting to know. I've never really messed around with my fonts before. Um, I think it would give our team a little run for the money. We have so many teams with English as a second language. I'm really impressed with everyone who can speak more than one language. Uh, Zeus, for instance, obviously is Greek, so he can speak Greek and he can speak English really well. And so it's just really impressive to see everyone who can speak multiple languages. So I don't know if me switching fonts would be helpful for my team <laughs> anyway tug of war is coming up this week um you'll see us talk about tug of war i'll be doing some targeting some event runs tomorrow so tomorrow our stream is at let's see today thursday today's thursday so it's our stream tomorrow at six let's check twitter so if you have already followed me on the right you can see my twitter handle over there the red delilah and on my twitter page you can see my event schedule for the day so let me take a look i believe tomorrow is at six o'clock but before i lie to you and say it's at six i want to double check because i would hate to spread wrong information right all right so f oh nope Tomorrow is at 11 a.m. So we're in the morning tomorrow. <gasps> we should do mimosas tomorrow. If I'm not drinking a lot of cold meds, we'll do mimosas tomorrow for the stream. Um, but you, tomorrow you will see me do some event runs tomorrow. I'll be doing some chest hunting, doing some targeting, talk about how you use your energy efficiently. Um, and the event starts in a couple hours soon. So plus two more, total of four. Yes, Zeus is insane. Zeus is definitely, Zeus is from Greece without a doubt. Spanish and Arabic. That's really impressive, Twilight. Man, I'm so impressed with you guys. Um, I can speak English, and that's about it. I'm learning a little bit from teammates about how to say different words. Uh, in Czech right now is what I'm working on, like ahoy, which is, um, what is it, Czech for hello. And I'm working on these. I could spell it, say it, not so much, but I'm working on it. So um, with that being said, we are going to end the stream about seven minutes early today. Oh, thank you so much for the follow, guys. Nice to have you. Unfortunately, you're catching us at the end here, darling. Um, Copper says, are there any chess bases that are any good? I don't hit chess bases uh, because when they changed the chest code that made it so the higher the de defense power compared to your own attack power on your roster, um, it just made it a little bit more complicated than I was willing to go through. So typically, I'll just hit um, 
big bases and try to teach myself how to fly. So like I've said before, um, the more you hit hard bases, the better flyer you'll become. So try to hit those hard bases, um, really push yourself. But if you don't have the um, potions to do so, it's definitely worth asking your league chat. So right now, unfortunately, I don't have any, but I'll see if I can find out from my league chat and report back to you guys tomorrow at 11 a.m. So it's been a lot of fun. Bye guys. See you tomorrow.